Hey everybody, Brian Von VA here, back at it again, wishing you well this December, and hoping that anyone here listening in is doing a-okay. With that said, what's the funniest thing PCs latched onto? Part 2. I'm kinda new to D&D, but I have surprised everyone in the two groups I've played in by getting overly attached to and exploiting cursed and or joke items. The first example was when I played as a rogue, there was this painting that did a massive amount of psychic damage to those that looked at it. I took it, then buried it under our loot so that if anyone was digging through our things without knowing it was there, they weren't getting out unscathed. The funniest, though, was a joke item. It was presented to us as a ring of teleportation, but when used, it wouldn't teleport the wearer, just the wearer's clothes, including the ring. I took that after the other PCs dismissed it, and later, when we were fighting someone with really bulky armor, I tricked them by offering this ring and stabbing him in the back when all their armor was suddenly on the opposite side of the room. My friend told me that in her campaign she was playing a bard, and they were going through a dungeon and found a supply closet with a few cleaning supplies. She found a bucket to which she became immediately attached to. She asked if she could use it as her instrument. She originally used bongos. The DM, very amused and interested by this, went with it and even made it a magical bucket that could be used to channel magic through and create infinite soapy water that smelled like lemons. Ooh, that's cool. He also created a backstory for it, claiming an old wizard put magic on it and the other cleaning supplies in the closet. That entire campaign was funny to hear about. And very cleanly, too. A business card. During a scion, modern day demigods, think uh, gritty Percy Jackson with all the pantheons, three shot. I had the players find one of the big bad evil guy's business cards. A player had the ability to talk to the spirits of inanimate objects and decided to interrogate the card. The card, of course, knew practically nothing, but I gave it a cute voice and it sang a little jingle about the big bad evil guy's phone number. It became a party pet and sort of a mascot. I am playing a war-forged fighter, Eldritch Knight, and since he was replacing my last character, who tragically died, he wasn't as well-liked and he didn't fit in as much. We had finished fighting a powerful young green dragon and were looking inside the buildings of an abandoned village. In one shop, I rolled for perception and investigation to find anything important, and I find a fishbowl with a weird tadpole creature swimming in a slimy brine liquid. I decided to take the creature and I carried him around with us. I named him Fleet, cause they said he was a pest, and he was brought along with the party. A few events with Flea include me dropping him onto a tied up goblin's face and watching him gleefully as he crawled inside the screaming goblin's head. Ooh. Then I decapitated the goblin with Flea inside the head and stuffed it in the fishbowl. Also, my one party member put Flea into their mouth and in four seconds, my teammate went from 42 health to two health before we managed to remove him. As well, my party member tried to telekinetically communicate with Flea and was traumatized by the experience. Even with this grim crap, my character adored Flea and protected him with his life. After the incident of my friend trying to eat Flea, which was caused by a huge argument of what we should do with Flea, I realized what I had to do and threw Flea in the fishbowl at a tree, shattered it, and let Flea die. Turns out, Flea was a Mind Flayer tadpole, young versions of the freaky scare octopus people that crawl inside a creature's body and turns them into a mind flare. Kinda messed up. But even worse, when my friend telekinetically communicated with Flea, he didn't talk to Flea. He talked to the hive mind that was in control of all the mind flares. And the sheer power of this brain mind that controlled the mind flares left him traumatized and mentally damaged. We were about to finish the final mission, and I'm carrying Flea around with us for some reason. Although our DM said he has possible plans for my character having a pet when we begin our next campaign campaign with the same characters. So yeah, I was carrying a baby mind flare and didn't even know it. This might get a bit long, but... I once played a drow rogue, and while exploring the catacombs of an ancient monastery, I decided to engage in some good old-fashioned grave robbing. Yeehaw! 
every time we went past a niche, I'd ask if I could search for loot. DM let me roll, found a bunch of interesting stuff, but nothing more so than Yorick. See, I rolled low, and the DM couldn't think of anything, so he just said, Yeah, no, there's nothing there but old bones. So I said, I'm going to take the skull. DM was confused, but shrugged it off. Later, we needed a distraction to get past some Draugr. So I threw the skull down a corridor, and they went to investigate the noise. On our way back, the Draugr were gone, so I decided to retrieve the skull. After that, I just kept it on me and used it for various things, like one time we had to hit a button on a wall on the other side of a room without moving, and it was magically protected against arrows. Another time, I used it as a bargaining chip while haggling with a halfling guide over renting his his mules to help us over a mountain pass. And I was able to convince him that the skull was the most valuable thing I owned. And then I sleight of handed it off of the stump he'd set it on back into my pack while he got the mules that we stole. Eventually, the rest of the table nicknamed the skull Yorick, and seeing as my PC wasn't the sanest of the party, whenever the DM would tell me things in relation to roles I'd made that my PC had no right knowing anything about, he'd start talking with the skull. The exchange usually went like this out of game. I'd like to roll to see if I know anything about this. Okay, roll history. 17. Yeah, so you know that a long ago, a curse was placed on this land. In game, however, what's that, Yorick? You know about this place? It has a curse? Over the 30 plus years I've played and GM'd, I've seen a lot of PCs latch onto a lot of very questionable and outright silly things. And I've been the PCs who have latched onto a lot of very questionable things myself. Occasionally, I just invent some random new magically useless apparatus to see how long the party will carry it around, investigate it, you know, etc. Before either giving up or tossing it as the useless bit of fluff I intended. I'm not the kind who presents a riddle without clues and hints when they mess with it and work through the lines of questioning and clues in their minds. It almost always percolates the truth to the surface, and as often as not, they actually just keep whatever. It's silly and useless, but somehow magical. Whatever. Once they get to the punchline, they like to own the joke well enough. Once had a GM who had his heart set on an open sea adventure. And at first, none of us read the hints and flags. We fumbled our way into a poker game and won a small fortune. And the ship, it was stowed away aboard. And I promptly went right out and sold the whole thing for next door to dirt cheap rescued a city guard from a band of thugs, and his father was so pleased we kept his son from getting killed, we got a sizable boat. Not quite a ship, but dubiously large enough to be competitive. And we used it to get across a small strait, only to load it full of alchemist's fire and use it as a makeshift torpedo. I had a necromancer, and being the only party member of the party who IRL knew a thing in the world about boats, ships, or sailing, was pretty bound to get stuck as the captain. When, because the GM really wanted it, we got involved in a piracy on the High Seas story arc, it was almost too much fun just teasing and frustrating the hell out of our GM over that story arc. But we eventually relented, and as I expected, I, who knew the terminology technology principles and even the most of the knots got promoted to captaining the ship, even as a necromancer. So, embracing my PC's new role, I made a regular habit of checking the ship's inventory in the hold. And sooner or later, the GM admitted to some of the livestock dying off during the travel. So I raised an undead chicken and perched the rotting bird on my shoulder, presenting the more suitably traditional costume for such an obviously fringe-style character. And the rest of the party crowed delightly. In fact, they embraced embrace the whole chickens versus parrots theme. While my character traded the mystical cloak for a captain's waistcoat and hat, they busied themselves with decorating the hat with chicken feathers, even embroidering a chicken skull to the Jolly Roger. That's one thing about our table. Once this pack gets a hold of a running gag, they certainly run with it. Winky face.
I was with a random party at a convention, and we were playing a Fallout RPG one-shot. We don't hear many stories from them. I was the guy trying to eat every spider I came across because I was just that hungry. Eventually, as we get into town, I went dumpster diving and found a rad roach. I rolled a nat one to eat it, so I actually tamed it. Ha, <laughs> lol. First dungeon the party goes to has to clear out some ghouls, and at the end was a feral ghoul reaver as the boss. <laughs> My rad roach, Petey, motherfucking crits his attack roll, kills the reaver with a bite to the throat, then happily skitters back onto my shoulder. Oh, how cute. The party was laughing so hard, and our GM was so pissed. It doesn't end, though. We gave Petey a little bag of caps to wear as an adorable little backpack as we shopped, and later, the town was attacked by some slavers we had escaped, and they brought a whole army with their leader hidden among their ranks. My character kept getting shitty rolls to kill anything, so I had Petey make his turn. I tell the GM that Petey would like to spot the leader. He goes, you'd have to roll a nat 20, so Petey does. Okay, but you have to roll another to see if he can communicate it to your sniper. Again, another nat 20. And the table loses its shit. Leader goes down with a single headshot because of our most legendary of rad roaches. Petey later died because of a rocket to the face, but because our tale was so legendary in that convention, a couple of others who played the same game at different tables took all their luck points to revive Petey, and now he is a glowing mutant legendary rad roach that will forever live with my PC. My party was consisting of a wizard, a druid, a barbarian, a ranger, and I played a bard, as always. Anyway, we were on our way to find an ancient wizard named Wilbold the White, who was half dragonborn and half human, <laughs> don't ask, and we had to stay the night in a cave. In the morning, our ranger found a Koatua snooping outside the cave. The ranger yelled, Bow before me, weakling! And then the Koatua ran off. The rest of the party and I I got pissed because we could have asked the Koatua where the hell we were at. We were all lost. So I decided to tie the ranger up to a log and hold them up in the air. The rest of the party agreed and didn't complain about my plan. The ranger got pissed and kept failing at escape rolls. The DM was fucking loving what we did next. While all of us were holding up the ranger tied to a log in the air, we kept yelling, SACRIFICE! SACRIFICE! While marching through the woods trying to find a Koatua camp. Anyway, we find one and threw the tied up ranger in the middle of a bundle of Koatua. All the Koatua started stabbing the ranger. I, being a nice dude, charmed the Koatua king and got him to give me the ownership of the other Koatua. Of course, I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> I made the Koatua kill the ranger and then breed with each other until death. Some folks say it was a dick thing I did, but I think say never fuck with the bard. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here. I hope y'all had some laughs, goofs, and gaffs tonight. If so, then please like the video, subscribe, ring that bell, and make sure to follow Mr. Ripper on Twitter and to join our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper, where you can submit your stories for us to read in a video or read live. Using a help action, you can always click my big face and come over to subscribe to your favorite voice actor from Ohio, me, Brian Von Vier. I showcase voice acting challenges and topics while streaming games from time to time. And as of this recording, I'm feeling loads better and wanted to share that love to each and every one of you. The pains we face daily from fear and anxiety, loss, and other hardships, they're not only valid, but temporary. And it takes time to heal, so go get offline a little bit, stay away from the world, and call your parents, friends, or even snuggle up with your pet. Give yourself that love and that time so you can feel better. With that said, be safe. We'll see you next time. All the love. Bye for now.